first question really is, uh, you know, about how you found out about clinical trials. And I certainly have my memory about how this all happened for you, but I would love for you to share sort of your, what you recall from, uh, from when we got started with this way back when. Well, how this all got started was I was working at Target Field. And when I would come home that August and September of 2012, I would get into bed and I couldn't get to sleep for coughing. And my wife, it kept getting on her nerve. So she said, you keeping me up. So we need to go to the doctor to find out what's going on because with you doing this, something tells me that something is wrong. So she made the appointment and we got to the health partners clinic. My doctor at that time was Dr. Um, Robert Drulard. And we got there, he said, go to x-ray. When you go come out of x-ray, go back to the lobby and I'll come out and get you. So we I did that and he came out and got us and brought us back into the room. And he set the x-ray up in the light. He said, Vernon, you see that spot on your right lung? He's, I said, yes. He said, you have lung cancer. And my wife was standing next to me and she turned around and she looked up at me and she was like, wow. I didn't know, she said, I don't see no tears in his eyes. I don't, he's not crying. And he didn't say, oh God, why me? She said, all I saw in this man's face was his faith in God kicked in. And so I just told him, I said, okay, it's in my body. So now what are we going to do to get rid of it? Because starting out over there, they told me that I was going to die. And I looked at him and I said, no, I'm not. So as we continued along with Dr. Wayne, he gave me a dose of chemotherapy in December of 13. And what had happened, I don't know how it happened, but I became dehydrated. And I lay there in my bed for two weeks. I couldn't keep any food down. I couldn't keep no liquids down. And when she called the hospital and told them, and they told her, Mrs. Satterfield, you got to get him to the hospital and tell them to admit him. And so they did, they kept me for about two weeks and they did not let me leave until I could be able to keep liquids and food down. And so I got up and I went home and I kept going to radiation and chemo under Dr. Wayne. And it got to a point to where he said, well, I, you know, I didn't did all I can do for you. I can't do no more for you. And so he packed up his practice and moved to Northern California. And then he said, well, if you want to, I can send you to the University of Minnesota and you will be up under Dr. Patel. And my wife said, okay, yes, we will do that. And that's when we came over to the U and I don't forget the young ladies. I think her name was Claudia, if I'm not correct. Yep. And that's, that's, that's when right. we sat down and talked to her. And my wife said, yes, we'll go and be up under Dr. Patel. Once you heard about the clinical trial, uh, how long it took then to get, get going on treatment? It didn't take that long. But I told her, my wife, she agreed with us. She said, yes, we need to get him on this trial because I don't want my husband to pass away and leave me in the four girls. And I kept assuring her, honey, I am not going to die. I'm not going to die. And like I told her, I said, I'm not knocking doctors or any doctor because I know they went to school to learn about the human body, but I know Jesus Christ and his father, they created the body. So I know they know more about it than them. So. I just kept saying, my wife kept saying, even when we would come after that and had the chemo and when it was time for to get the results of the scan. <laughs> and then when you would come in, <laughs> she would say, I can't read him. I can't read his face. <laughs> and then that's when she would get all nervous and she would ask you, how did the CT scan look? And then that's when you would tell her it looked good. 